Helgen Keep is the first dungeon the player explores in Skyrim, serving as the game's tutorial. While not as long and frankly tedious as the Imperial City Prison in Oblivion, or as short and snappy as the Census and Exile's office in Morrowind, Helgen Keep, in my opinion, serves as a decent middle ground between getting the plot started and showing the player the ropes. But Helgen Keep is not the last of the tutorial. The first two dungeons the player is most likely to come across immediately after exiting Helgen are Embershard Mine and Bleak Falls Barrow. Both of these dungeons, in my opinion, serve to introduce the player to more of Skyrim's mechanics that couldn't fit in Helgen Keep without making it feel like the Oblivion tutorial. In order to demonstrate this, I've created three characters representing the three core playstyles, Falvis, the fighter, Malvis, the mage, and Talvis, the thief. I'll play through both dungeons as each one. Now, just a disclaimer here. I have absolutely zero professional education in game design. These are just some things that I noticed in early game dungeons and found interesting. Creeper. Oh, man. So let's start off with Embershard Mine. Located between the Guardian Stones and Riverwood, a plank-lined trail leads the player off the road parallel to the White River and towards the entrance of the mine. It is guarded by a single low-level bandit. Beside the entrance is a wood chopping block with no axe to use it with. Upon entering the mine, the tunnel slopes downward into a tripwire rigged to a falling boulder trap. This is probably the first trap most Skyrim players encounter. You can easily go around it, but the unwary player is in for a surprise. Rock traps in general aren't particularly dangerous, but even if you do die to this trap, the last autosave was at most 10 seconds ago. The torches here can be removed from their sconces. This allows stealth-based characters to sneak around more easily. Light level reflects how hard it is for enemies to detect you, but that's only explicitly revealed in loading screens. Further ahead, you can hear a conversation between two bandits. After dispatching these two bandits, you can find a pickaxe next to an iron ore vein, which indirectly teaches a new player about harvesting raw materials. A bit of exploration leads the player to a lever, which lowers the drawbridge over the pool of water similar to the one in Helgen Keep. In the tunnel past the drawbridge, there's a small opening that lets you grab a few things out of the locked treasure room, such as a clairvoyant spell tome, a dagger, and some coins. Immediately after, you can enter the treasure room after killing the bandit guarding it, or you can sneak past him. Or sometimes he'll detect you coming around the corner and try to kill you through the treasure room, opening the door for you. And sometimes said bandit will loot the chest, grab a staff, and use it against you. At least, I assume that's what happened here because I've never seen a bandit spawn with a staff. Past the treasure room is the final part of the dungeon. This area contains a few iron ingots, a forge, a grindstone, a workbench, a few weapons on a rack, and a smithing skill book. This is one of the first skill books the player is likely to come across, along with the one-handed skill book at the bandit camp outside of Helgen. This is also the first time that many players will come across crafting stations where they can upgrade their armor and weapons with the iron ingots laying around. There's also a fishing pole and some fishing supplies from the Anniversary Edition upgrade. Look at that, Malva's got a Histgarp! Upon exiting, there are also a few bone rattles hanging off the ceiling. If you enter Embershard Mine from the unmarked exit, the bone rattles will alert enemies if you run into them. Since most players will enter from the marked entrance, these really only serve as set dressing. So, all in all, Embershard Mine introduces the mechanics of rockfall traps, bone rattles, lighting based stealth, mining, weapon upgrading, armor upgrading, smithing, skill books, and fishing. Go to Bleak Falls Barrow. Moving on from Embershard Mine, let's look at Bleak Falls Barrow. Two quests will send you in this direction Lucan's Golden Claw Quest and Farangar's Dragonstone Quest. Upon entering Bleak Falls Barrow, you find yourself in a spacious antechamber littered with dead bandits and skeevers. Mages can use these corpses to their advantage if they have a necromancy spell, resurrecting fallen bandits to take on the two bandits at the end of the antechamber. Down the hall, there is a burial urn placed on an altar. This serves the purpose of teaching the player that grave robbery is fun and profitable. Further down, you can see a higher level bandit in a room just past a doorway. He pulls a lever on the ground and dies to poison darts. This is the first puzzle of the dungeon, and the first puzzle of the game for many players. On the ground beside the lever is an iron plate stamped with the image of a snake. Mounted on the wall directly above the portcullis are two more iron plates, a snake on the left and a whale on the right. A section of wall between the two is damaged, presumably being where the snake plate fell from. To the left of the room's entrance are three rotating pillars, where each pillar can be rotated to show an engraving of either a snake, a whale, or a hawk. This puzzle sets the stage for most Nordic Ruin puzzles. 
Most of them are match the image puzzles. Some players think Skyrim puzzles are too easy. Some players try random combinations before hopping on Reddit or GameFAQs to ask for help. If you want my opinion, there's a reason why Velox Tomb is one of my favorite dungeons. Past this room, there's a pickpocket skill book lying on an altar, along with a chest and a soul gem. Up until this point, you've seen dead skeevers littering the halls, but it's only when you go down a spiral staircase that you meet some live ones. On an altar just after the spiral staircase is a paralysis poison and a fireball scroll. In the hallway just past this room, there's a skeleton trapped in some rubble, along with the entrance to the spider's lair, which needs to be cleared of webbing before proceeding. This introduces the mechanic of web clearing, which is used basically anywhere spiders are found. Which brings us to the first mini-boss of the game, the Wounded Frostbug Spider. There are a few ways to deal with this spider. You could just smack it with your melee until it's dead, or you could use the fireball scroll from the previous room. The spider can't fit through doorways, so you can also take cover in the hallway and shoot arrows at it. The paralysis poison from the previous room won't work against the spider, as some players have surely learned the hard way. On my mage playthrough, I threw all the dead skeevers down the corridor to the entrance of the mini-boss room, armed the skeleton with my sword, and resurrected them one by one. I was feeling creative. After the spider's dead, you then talk to Arvel the Swift, who promises to tell you the secret of Bleakfall's barrow if you cut him out of his webbing. He then immediately breaks his promise and runs off with a claw. You could use the paralysis poison from the skeever room to stop him from running, although he won't get very far anyway without either getting killed by a draugr or running into a trap. Oh yeah, this is the part where Draugr are introduced, as well as spike wall traps, swinging blade traps, and oil slicks. Minor correction in post here, oil slicks were introduced in Helgen Keep, but oil pots that hang from the ceiling are introduced in Bleak Falls Barrow. Oil slicks are actually some of my favorite ways to use traps to your own advantage. After some more Draugr fighting, you come into a natural cave with a stream running through it. Beside the stream is a skeleton next to some iron ore and a couple pickaxes, in case you missed the one in Ember Shard Mine. There's also a chest towards the back of this cave with a guaranteed fireball scroll. Beyond this, no new concepts are really introduced until the Hall of Stories. At the end of the Hall of Stories is the infamous ring puzzle. I say infamous because this seems to have tripped quite a few players up. The solution is hinted at in Arvel's journal, as well as a line of Arvel's dialogue. Yes, the claw. I know how it works. The claw, the markings, the door, and the Hall of Stories. I know how they all fit together. It's never explicitly stated beforehand, but the solution is to match the markings on the rings with the markings on the sole of the claw. After this, you enter the boss's chamber. After some cheap bat spooks to startle unsuspecting players, you approach a massive stone structure at the very back of the room with a very enticing aura. This is one of the many word walls that teaches the player new shouts, a mechanic introduced in the next quest. Once the player has absorbed the wisdom of the wall, the boss breaks out of his sarcophagus and goes on the attack. If you save the previous two fireball scrolls, you could take out a good chunk of his health before finishing him off with your melee. Or, if you are lucky enough to find a master level destruction scroll beforehand, you can annihilate him before he can even touch you. You can also take him one on one, since he's not too too tough of a boss. And finally, once he's dead for good, you can pluck the dragonstone off his body and make your way to a hidden door that's inaccessible from the other side, where the exit is. So, what mechanics does Bleak Falls Bearer introduce the player to? Well, you have poison dart traps, rotating pillar puzzles, poisons, magic scrolls, web clearing, boss and mini boss battles, spike wall traps, swinging blade traps, oil pots, claw puzzle doors, word walls, and one way exits. It also reintroduces skill books and mining if you weren't introduced to those mechanics in Ember Shard Mine. So next time you find yourself in Ember Shard Mine or Bleak Falls Barrow, just keep in mind that both of these dungeons were specifically designed to teach you how Skyrim works.